Hey everyone, it's Bradley Bush with another algebra video for you. Today we are talking about horizontal asymptotes. Our to-do list, first we will have a review of rational functions because we find horizontal asymptotes in rational functions. Second, we will give you a definition of a horizontal asymptote so you actually know what it is. And then we will discuss how to find horizontal asymptotes. And then we will see if you can say asymptote three times quickly without smiling, after which we'll do a worked example. And then I'll put all these uh, timestamps in the video description so you can move ahead if you want. Let's talk about rational functions. Quick review of rational functions. They're pretty simple. The main idea is that a rational function is a function where you have a fraction and you have a polynomial in the top of the fraction and you have a polynomial in the bottom of the fraction. And uh, the only domain restriction is that you cannot have zero in the denominator. So any number that makes the bottom polynomial equal to zero has to be kicked out of the domain. But besides that, it's all real numbers. And let's talk about that weird word asymptote what is an asymptote? Well, it's, in layman's terms, an invisible line that gets closer and closer to the graph of a curve without touching it as either x approaches positive or negative infinity or y approaches positive or negative infinity. So there are three types of asymptotes, horizontal, vertical, and oblique. The oblique are often called slant asymptotes, and that's the word that I'll use most often in this video. Here are two common rational functions. The first one is the reciprocal function, 1 over x. It kind of looks like um, a mirror image, two, two kind of bows, if you're thinking of bow and arrows, and the bow and arrows are pointing towards the origin as if they're going to shoot an arrow through the origin. And uh, the bows are kind of pulled back slightly, so they're bent a little. and uh, one of those bows is in the first quadrant or the top right part of the graph, and the other one is in the bottom left part of the graph, or quadrant three. These, um, you see, they have, they get closer and closer to the xy axis, but they don't actually touch. Uh, the reason they don't touch is because there are horizontal and vertical asymptotes there that keep them from touching. There's some information here you can look at below uh, about the reciprocal function. But the next one is uh, called, well, I call it the Atari function. It's not really called the Atari function. I just think it looks like an Atari symbol. So again, has two um, bows, if you're thinking of bow and arrows. But the one that was in the bottom left is now flipped up into the top left. So we have one in the top right and one in the top left. And so they come from the outside and shoot up as they get close to the uh, y axis. And again, we have two horizontal, or we have a horizontal and vertical asymptote. Examples of other rational functions that we see commonly. Um, one, oh, sorry, you might not see these commonly, but they're just different cool looking graphs. You can have all sorts of different types of asymptotes. You can have horizontal asymptotes, you can have vertical asymptotes, and they break up the function in lots of different ways. Um, you can have U shapes for the function, you can have L shapes, or the bone arrow shape, as you call it. You can have elongated S shapes, where it goes up as it comes, goes to the right, and it goes down as it goes to the left. You can also have slant asymptotes, like you see in the third picture here, where you ha it looks kind of like the function 1 over x, but if you took the horizontal asymptote that's on the x-axis and you kind of made it into a teeter-totter and you put weight on the left side, so it squished the left side down and the right side went up like a teeter-totter would, and the graph of the function kind of bent to follow that new change of the left going down, the right going up, um, that's kind of what your slant asymptote would look like. But you can get some pretty interesting functions. Let's talk about arrow notation. 
So air notation is used in the definition of asymptotes. So let's make sure we get everything clear here. So x and then a right arrow and then a with a plus in the power. That means as x approaches a from the right, the plus means from the positive side of the graph or from the right side, you have a approaching left, sorry, approaching a, I totally said that wrong. You have x approaching a from the left, that is the x and then a right arrow and then a with a negative in the power. You also have x approaches infinity, or in other words, x gets bigger without stopping. That is written x and then the right arrow and then the infinity symbol. And then you have x and the left arrow, sorry, x and the right arrow and the negative infinity. That means x approaches negative infinity or decreases without bound. Here's the definition of a horizontal asymptote. So a line, a horizontal line, y equals a, where a is just a constant, like 5 or 4 or whatever. Excuse me. The line y equals a is a horizontal asymptote of f if one of these following scenarios occurs. So as x approaches infinity, if the function value, the y value, gets closer, or f, gets closer to a. So it could come up from the bottom left and go up and get closer and closer as it curves over right. It can get closer and closer to that horizontal line, imaginary line, y equals a. Or it can come down from the top and then as it goes right, get closer and closer. Or it can come down from the left, get closer as it moves, come down from the right and go to the left. There's so many different options, really. These are just a couple. But either way, the point is as x moves towards positive infinity, the function goes towards the a value, that line gets closer and closer to that horizontal line. Or as x goes towards negative infinity, if the function moves towards that line y equals a, and there are lots of different options for that happening, it could come up, cross the imaginary line, and then curve over to the left. And then as it curves over to the left, it kind of flattens out and gets closer to that horizontal line. Or it could just come up from the bottom. And then as it gets closer and closer to that line, y equals a, it kind of curves and bends over and kind of aligns itself with it as it moves left or right, depending on which way it's going. But in either, in any of these cases, as x is approaching positive or negative infinity, the function is approaching that imaginary line y equals a. How do we find horizontal asymptotes? I'm going to first talk to you about the mathematical rule, and then I'm going to give you a snowman rule, which is just something I made up. But it's amazing because you will never forget how to find horizontal asymptotes if you know the snowman rule. So first of all, let me make sure I define this rational function. This rational function is f, and it's got a polynomial on the top, and it's got a polynomial on the bottom. So the number in front of the leading coefficient, the, talking about the leading coefficient, the number in front of the variable, the x, with the highest power, I'm going to call that a sub n. And the number in front of the term with the highest power in the bottom, or in other words, the leading coefficient in the bottom, we'll call b sub n. So if we compare the polynomials, the degree of the polynomial on the top and the degree of the polynomial on the bottom, this really tells us everything we need to know. The degree, by the way, of a polynomial is the biggest power you see and the biggest power, the biggest exponent you see in the top and the bottom. So in the top, our highest power is n. In the bottom, our highest power is m. So if n is big is less than m, in other words, the highest power in the top is less than the highest power in the bottom, then y equals 0 is our horizontal asymptote. If the highest power in the top and the bottom are the same, then we take a ratio of the leading coefficients, a sub n divided by b sub m, 
and that we set that equal to y, and that's our horizontal asymptote. Or if n, which is the biggest power on the top, is bigger than m, which is the biggest power on the bottom, then f doesn't have a horizontal asymptote. Just as a side note, there might be a slant asymptote if the top is bigger than the bottom by one. So let's talk about the snowman rule because I think the snowman rule is much easier than remembering all of that stuff. So if we compare the size of the snowballs, I think most of you out there have built a snow. No, I take that back. If you live in Arizona, maybe you haven't built a snowman. But you've probably seen Frozen. You want to build a snowman? I'm sure you all know how to build a snowman. And if you looked at these different ways of building a snowman, I've got three different options here. One has the smallest size ball at the top, and as you go down towards the bottom, the base of the snowman, it gets bigger. That's one option. The second option has all of the snowballs the same size, which isn't bad, right? If you've built a snowman, you know that's not bad. It could be a little unstable, but it's not bad. It, it works. It's okay. And then the third option, the top of the snowman is the biggest snowball. And as you go down towards the base of the, of the snowman, the snowballs get smaller. That is a terrible way to build a snowman because the base is where all the weight is and it's going to fall over. That's a terrible, terrible snowman. So if we think of these three ways to build a snowman, we can remember everything we need to know. If we think of the size of these snowballs as the size of the exponent in the top or the bottom, if the top exponent is smaller than the bottom exponent, which is what we have in the first scenario with the snowman here, the top ball is smaller than the bottom snowball, then y equals zero is our horizontal asymptote. If the top ball is the same size as the bottom ball, meaning the top exponent is the same size, the biggest exponent at the top is the same as the biggest exponent in the bottom, then y equals a sub n over b sub m. So we take it from that fraction we're talking about is the horizontal asymptote. And if the top snowball is bigger than the bottom snowball, snowball, excuse me, there is no horizontal asymptote. So if you can just remember the snowball idea, this the, the snowman idea, that if the top if the top ball is smaller than the bottom ball, y equals zero is the horizontal asymptote, or if the snowball is built normal, the, the way that you normally see a snowman, then y equals zero is the horizontal asymptote. If the top snowball is the same as the bottom snowball, you have y equals a sub n over b sub n. Those, that's just the ratio of the leading coefficients. And if the top snowball is bigger than the bottom snowball, there's no horizontal asymptote. <clears throat> you might never forget the snowman rule. If you forget anything else in this video, or everything else in this video, you probably won't forget the snowman rule. Let's do a worked example. Find the horizontal asymptote, if any, of the following functions. So I'm thinking snowman rule here. So I'm going to compare the highest exponent at the top and the bottom. Because 1, or the top 1, is smaller than the bottom 1. So this is the top, this is the bottom. Because the top is smaller than the bottom, which snowman rule is that? That's the one we like, right? That's the great way to build a snowman. Then that means y equals zero is our horizontal asymptote. Let's check the second one. We look at the highest exponent at the top and the highest exponent at the bottom. And 
our function for the first one, by the way, I forgot to tell you, the function for the first um, one we tested was 4x in the top, and then bottom it was 2x squared minus 1. So the exponent at the top was highest exponent on the top was 1, then the highest exponent at the bottom was 2. The second one we're doing here, uh, the function is 4x squared in the top and 2x squared minus 1 in the bottom. So the biggest exponents on top and bottom are the same. So because uh, 2 equals 2, I mean the size, the, the size in the top and the bottom is the same, then we take a ratio of the leading coefficients, which are 4 and 2, and that gives us 2. So y equals 2 is the horizontal asymptote. That was pretty quick, right? The third function is 4x cubed in the top and 2x squared minus 1 in the bottom. So we look at the biggest exponents, and because 3 is bigger than 2, so the top is bigger than the bottom, then we have no horizontal asymptote. And that's it. Hopefully this was helpful. Hope you never forget uh, the snowman rule. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching.